All right, so time for another one of these videos. I have no idea how it's gonna come out because it's been about five or six, God, maybe maybe even 10 years since I was really hardcore into looking up all the research and stuff. So this video is gonna be a bit light on the actual science because for the most part, it's not useful. It's not applicable to what you're trying to do. The reality of dealing with health, uh, health ailments like uh, obesity, you know, tinnitus, chronic things, is to get the core idea and start actually applying it. Everyone that goes looking for this stuff on the net, they normally get some degree of paralysis by analysis. You'll read, you'll read, you'll read. If you're a particular social media fan, you'll post all about it, but you won't actually do it. So my emphasize, uh, emphasis, sorry, not my emphasize with these videos is take the basic concept, go try it. You know, go apply the basic idea with it. It's... It's completely different, you know, I can vouch from personal experience here. It's completely different actually applying the information you know and getting it to line up on the right levels, if you get what I mean, than reading about it in a book and, oh, I'm so smart, you know, all this stuff. It's not useful. So again, if you want to learn more and more details about the stuff I'm talking about, go Google it, go look it up, you know, look up medical studies, look up all that kind of stuff if you're into it. But understand that good health is not fundamentally, in my opinion, and I will argue with any doctor, any medical professional to the contrary, good health is not about brains or willpower or discipline or anything like that. It's simply about getting all the right factors to line up. And for the most part, in terms of the modern environment, it's just about learning to relax more. That's pretty much the case with all of it. You could sum it all up like that. You know, if you can get your nervous system calm enough, and there's a hell of a lot of, uh, you know, different factors going on with that, but... The emotional stuff's a big issue. Take care of that. You will definitely experience improvements in your health, including obesity. So this video, I'm gonna talk about a very basic concept with it. It's called the body weight set point theory or whatever name you wanna hear. You know, you hear it depending on where you look it up. The key idea is that the body has a set point of weight that it likes to keep on it. You know, a certain composition, you know, of muscle, fat, whatever. It's why uh, when dieting, you know, the typical response to dieting is you diet, you know, you cut the calories, whatever, whatever amount it is you do, you see a drop in weight, blah, 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 over a certain period of time, and then it seems to slow down, it seems to come to a halt, and normally at that point, cravings for food get that strong, that sooner or later, you're gonna crack, you're gonna have a binge, you know, you're going to eat, that weight will come flying back on freakishly quick, you know, and based on my own experiences studying diet and things like that, you know, I'm not a scientist, I need to use myself as a guinea pig when doing the research on this stuff, but my own experience was that the weight would take forever to go off, it didn't seem to line up neatly with the calories cut or whatever, and then it would fly straight back on. The second you, you know, cracked and had that bit, it would come right back on. And in my experience with dieting, it took way longer than it should have done on paper, to uh to get the weight loss you know you figured you would get in terms of the maths with the calorie cutting and all that stuff something else was clearly going on and this isn't accounting for weight loss plateaus where just against all the maths on paper it would stop you know you would have a clunk of weight loss it would stop and then clunk again down the line randomly it's a big subject to get into there's a hell of a lot of stuff going on for this video i'm going to try to focus and i'm three and a half minutes in i'm already off topic i'll try to focus on the set point theory Again, the basic idea is that the body sits at a certain weight, and my summary of it is, and I haven't uh, gone too far into all the exact details, because there's so much to get into, and again, it's really not useful. If you can just take that key point that there's various factors in your life influencing where your weight will sit at, both physical, emotional, and mental factors, if you can take care of all of those, you can start shifting this set point. So yeah, the key idea, you could stop the video after this bit if you wanted, and just go try applying it. The key idea is that there's certain emotional stress or mental habits or physical stresses in your life that make you require a certain amount of food. If you try to, you know, sort of leapfrog over those factors and get straight to cutting food, you're going to bloody struggle with weight loss. You know, a lot of time you will completely fail. And the lowest estimate I've seen for the success rates of most dieters is 90%. You know, 90% of people regain the weight. Most of them gain quite a bit more, you know, and the more you yo-yo diet, you know, you try again, cut more, you know, and blah, blah. It goes up and up over the years until most people just can't deal with it anymore. And there's a reason for that. Dieting damages the body. It does. And it's not that it's irreversible damage and that sort of thing. Although I've seen some papers that claim it is that they're, they're wrong, you know, and we'll get into that in a different video. But it does a lot of things to the body. You know, it burns out your adrenal glands, you know, your metabolism crashes, all this stuff. 
it's why people tend to end up heavier by the end of it. And not to mention all the emotional stuff that happens when you get going with that. But again, I'm rambling off topic. I would highly suggest you look into the work of John Gabriel. I remember when his work first started cropping up. It was about when I was starting to cement these ideas in my head myself. And I was really pleased to see that someone else was applying this stuff and had already gotten to the end of it. Go, go look at his pictures, go watch his videos and that sort of stuff. The guy used to be about 400 pounds and he now weighs about 180 and he, he does not look like he used to be obese. Which reinforces what I think about obesity, which is that dieting is a form of starvation, not a healthy lifestyle plan. You know, any form of diet, and all these new diets and different ideas and methodologies, they all end up being the same thing. There's some form of calorie restriction. And, like, you know, you take people that go, like, paleo, you know, the paleo diet, that sort of stuff. Ah, oh, we should be eating food that's, you know, healthy, like our ancestors ate. Well, the problem is, the equivalent you buy in a shop is nothing like a paleo food. You know, look at the difference between, you know, fruits and veg between then and now. It, it's not comparable. You cannot eat like Paleoithic man. You just can't. But yeah, and you take it a step further from that, people get more and more restrictive. This is a typical thing when people get into it and they see that initial bit of result. Like I was talking about, that initial bit of weight loss. They assume they're well on the money, they've done it, that's it. And that every step further is just needing to uh, get more restrictive. You know, they need to cut out more bad foods, you know, bad foods with air quotes. There's no such thing. It's everything is influenced by everything else. You know, there really is no definitive way to say something is good or bad. But again, different video. You can tell I'm not sure how to approach this. But yeah, so in terms of the set point theory, that whole restrictive idea seems like madness to me because there are plenty of skinny people in the world that eat whatever the hell they want, that they don't know what a calorie is, they've never thought of a macronutrient, you know, they don't know what food groups are good or bad. They just eat to appetite, they stop when they're full. There isn't an emotional uh, issue causing them to crave something within the food, you know, either a nutrient or... You know, just the feeling that food can produce, you know, it's a powerful thing. It can produce good feelings and all that stuff. Yeah, it's a very powerful issue. That's a big one I would say go look at if you're using food as an emotional crutch, you know, to get through things. And just, you don't have to start cutting food. Just look at it, observe what's going on with your behavior, and just start thinking about it. And over time, it will start to sort itself, you know, if you try. But again, different video. This one really is a mess. So, with the set point theory, like I say, the key point is that your body has a state that it likes to stay in, you know, it's why people's weights stay constant. There is no way, you know, like the typical advice on, uh, you know, calories and that, just, oh, you've got to worry about each calorie. If you eat a 55 calorie biscuit every day, that'll be six pounds of weight loss in a year, all those kinds of numbers I've read so many times. Well, you know, what do you do if, say, you eat a packet of crisps every day and the difference in the calories in the crisps? According to this theory, that should add up to massive amounts of weight loss. And I think I mentioned it in the last one. It renders the whole idea completely redundant. There's no need to go into too much detail. It just, it renders the whole thing redundant. According to that idea, all of our weights should be varying massively up or down all the time. And with my own experience with dieting and what I've seen of other people's and, you know, the research I've found on it, that doesn't happen. Our weights stay pretty constant, you know? They always tend to vary around a certain point, and that point can change. The set point theory. I've seen a few articles that, basically, they use it to drive home the discipline, hard work, you know, get off your ass type mentality. Because, oh, you've got to really fight it. You don't. The human body is always responding to the environment. If you're obese or you have weight on you that you, you know, want to shift or whatever or not enough, it means something in your life is going on to keep it there. This isn't an issue of genetics, like, oh, I had a fat dad, you know, and just being stuck there. It's not that at all. Something in your life is keeping your body that way. And the hard bit with obesity, you know, and I can vouch from personal experience here, is figuring out what's causing it. And it's a hard thing to do because the scope of most doctors and, you know, always ranting against the medical profession, but the scope of it is to focus on the physical things. You're not exercising enough, you're eating too much, or you like tasty food too much. And again, that idea is bollocks. It really is. There are hints of truth. But from my end of it, that's not where the focus should be at all. The focus should be on figuring out what emotional, physical, and mental factors are causing your set point to stay where it is, and starting to address those. And if you can do that, the weight will start flying off. Mine's been doing it recently. I think it was a month and a half ago, I was about 13 stone 
12, something like that. It varied up a bit because I've been going through a bit of stress. It had stayed at about 13 and a half stone for about a year. And it varied up then because, again, I was stressed. You know, certain chronic stresses in my life, trying to figure things out. A lot of it was just thinking too much. I know there's a different, uh, definite correlation between when I'm being too cerebral and thinking, you know, all up here. You know, my uh, tinnitus subs, you'll know what I mean with that. That anxious, high-end brainwave state. The beta state, the higher end of it. But yeah, I was spending more time in that and my weight went up a bit. And since I started to address it and I've started to address certain other emotional issues in my life, the weight has flown off. I think I checked it today, it was around 12 stone 10, which is, you know, starting to move into the 170s, which is like, you know, it's trippy. And there's no diet, no exercise, I'm not hungry, and you know, this is a lot of exercise for me, switching on the computer, getting up and fucking sitting in the seat to do a video. You know, it's just... Once you get that hard bit out of the way, figuring out what's going on in your life and actually lining up so that you can really deal with it, not just, oh yeah, I have to do this, you know. Once you've done it, the weight starts flying off. It's not an arduous task to lose weight. It becomes effortless. It really does. At the moment, it just weight's coming off. I'm not thinking about it at all. I'm really not. You know, it's happening around everything else. Funny enough, I'm thinking about food less and less, you know, all those kinds of things that people normally uh, have to deal with, with dieting, you know, cravings, uh, meal plan, that sort of stuff, just not at all. I eat like a normal person, is the way I put it. I eat what I'm hungry for and I stop when I'm full. And the rest of the day, I don't think about food. The goal with this stuff is to get to the point where food is not a uh, emotional issue for you. And this is another reason why I hate dieting. It leads to a really bad relationship with food and you see it so often with people, again, they get into dieting, they see a bit of result, oh wow, I figured it out, it's this, then it stops, so they wonder what's wrong, they do some reading on the net, they find the usual clickbait articles and all that stuff about, oh yeah, you know, you've got to go paleo or, you know, fucking whatever the diet of the day is, you know, all natural food, whatever, normally it means celery sticks, you know. Again, they're all some sort of uh, calorie restriction in disguise, in my opinion. Whatever the idea behind it is, that's why people lose weight on them, for the most part. And, you know, I've got nothing against, you know, healthier foods or anything, but if you're going to do that route, add it to your current diet and deal with the emotional issues. You know, don't take health, uh, nice foods away. You know, don't take the tasty ones away. And there's a whole video I could do on that, just how that shuts down the nervous system when you're not eating food you enjoy. You won't digest it well, all that stuff. But, yeah. So, this really has been a rambly one. Anyway, I, I will get more to the point in future videos, I'll structure it better, but I... Obesity is not a clear-cut, nice, neat little thing, everything in a box, you know? This is not something you can colour within the lines on. There's so many factors going on, like with my own, to anyone observing my behaviour, it looks like I'm doing nothing to lose the weight, because it's all in here and in here, you know? For me, it's entirely down to emotional and mental issues. It isn't a case of not doing enough exercise or eating too much food. It's entirely about stress and the way your body works. That stuff is the most important factor with our health. You know, people think food is the big one or exercise or something like it. It's not. You live in the body. It's constantly responding to what you perceive of the world around you 24 hours a day. You know, that makes hormonal changes. The endocrine system can get out of whack. And, you know, if you want to know what the cure for obesity is, get more insulin and leptin sensitive. That's it. You know, you will stop being hungry and the weight will come flying off if you could do that. The issue is doing it. It's harder in reality than it is on paper because you have to really dig deep and address the emotional issues that are causing a physical response in your endocrine system that, you know, shunts calories towards fat instead of other things. So yeah, with this set point stuff, I really haven't talked about it much for this video, but anyway, it, it's a ramble. Just got to try to get another one done. With this set point theory, I suggest looking up John Gabriel. He's done excellent work on it. been very, you know, it's wonderful to see people that have similar thoughts to this on mine. You know, they've come at it from a similar angle. They're getting out there, and his stuff's massive, you know. It, it'd be wonderful to have more and more people like that cropping up where they've applied this stuff and got good results. So I highly suggest checking that out. You know, most of the information you need from it is free on the net, you know. And uh, there's a study that I recommend going and looking up. And the problem is I can't find the original yet. Though granted, I haven't read too hard on it. I haven't looked too deeply, but it's called the Vermont Prison Study. And this one just completely blows the, set, the, uh, the calories in, calories out model of obesity. Blows it clear out the water. 
And again, I wish I could find the original. I'm having to always read someone else's interpretation of it, which is a pain in the ass when you're trying to be objective and scientific, but they all say the same basic thing. In, I can't remember the date, but they took a bunch of inmates, promised them time off their sentence if they could gain a certain amount of weight. I think the original goal of the study was to make them put on weight so that the you know, scientists, doctors, whatever, they could observe changes in triglyceride level, that, that kind of thing, you know, they wanted to see what was going on that happens with the obesity thing, which is, I find it funny because they already assumed they knew what causes obesity, too much calories, and they'd originally tried the study, I believe it was with uh, college students, again, I can't remember the exact details because it's different everywhere I look, but the key point is they took a group of civilians people that aren't, you know, stuck in a cell all day. They tried to get them to gain weight, you know, tried to get them to limit their exercise, to eat so much food, all that stuff. They tried to get them to put on a lot of weight and it didn't happen. And so the people doing the experiment summed it up as exactly the same way, you know, doctors sum up people that fail at dieting. They didn't have the discipline. They didn't stick to the plan, all this stuff, you know, because no one could gain all the weight they were supposed to gain. So they figured they'd try it with prisoners, because they could observe them all day long, they had no ethical issues about, you know, oh, it's cruel, whatever, all that stuff. They could mistreat and abuse them as much as they liked in the name of science. So they took these prisoners, limited their activity, observed them, stuffed them full of food, and said, yeah, if you can gain, I think, 10% of their weight? I can't remember all the details, but go look it up, it's really good. And yeah, I don't think any of the prisoners gained that weight. They didn't. They were eating 10,000 calories a day. According to the in-out model, they should have been gaining two pounds a day. It should have been a breeze. You know, just stuff them full of it. They're prisoners, you can, you know, force feed them or whatever, basically. And they should have just gained all that weight. And they didn't. I don't think one of them did. Some of them gained hardly any. And that's the bit I like as well. They all gained different amounts from what was written on paper. Which proves the point. There's other factors going on. And the fact that they didn't gain all this weight, even with all those calories, yeah. There's something else going on with obesity, and they didn't struggle to lose it either. I think they did calorie restrict them to get it down, but it came off really quick, really easily. Because that's not where their set point was at. It's all the other factors you should focus on to deal with obesity, in my opinion. So yeah, the takeaway from this video, a short summary. Read up on the set point theory. Don't take away from it the doomsday conclusions a lot of the articles will summarize. But basically, with the set point... <clears throat> sorry. With the set point theory, if your endocrine system is out of balance, you can exercise and you can diet as much as you like. That weight loss will, for starters, it won't be very effective because the body holds all the cards. You know, it can downregulate your metabolism. If you eat less, it will drop. You will burn less. It's a direct relationship there. So don't focus on those factors. Focus on the emotional and the mental issues. And if there's physical ones as well, you know, obviously those need addressing. But yeah. The key point is don't focus on calories. It's not the key point with obesity. You know, my results now have been pretty amazing, I think, compared to most. I think it's about six stone of weight loss now, which is a lot. Let me think, what's that in uh, pounds? It's 14 times six, blah, blah. 84 pounds, bit over that, punching up on 90 by this point. It's a hell of a lot, and it's staying off permanently with no effort. So I'm not bragging about it, I'm just saying these factors are important all of this emotional stuff and it'll be unique in each case so i highly suggest going and reading on the set point theory trying to find out bits on it that you can look into the endocrine system you know insulin resistance leptin resistance look at john gabriel's work his is probably the best on it i've seen and yeah i hope that helps i hope this video isn't too rambly probably is but you know again it's a big subject and these things don't fit neatly into little boxes as far as i perceive it so yeah and I haven't been in the middle of the shop for the whole video, have I? Oh well. So yeah, I hope you get something out of that. Feel free to ask me questions on it. And best of luck applying this. We will get more and more into it with the videos as I, you know, get on with this stuff. And hopefully I can compartmentalize, uh, yeah, just chop it up a bit easier. So that it's easier to understand and apply. But yeah, go away and start dealing with stress in your lives. That's the big takeaway. So yeah, hope that helps. Catch you next video. Bye.